everybody. Welcome to Me Time Gamer Podcasts, episode number two. I'm your host, Jonathan Fournier, creator and editor in chief of MeTimeGamer.com. Hope everybody had a good week t- this week. Uh, thank you for listening for episode number one. If you listened to episode one, if you haven't, well, stop this one and go back right now and listen to it. Well, you don't really have to. There's no continuation or anything like that, but it always helps. Um, yeah, so I hope everybody had a good week. There's a lot of news to talk about this week and a couple new releases. We're slowly getting getting into a lot of new releases coming up. Uh, all right, let's start with the new releases for the week of January 20th, 2015. First game on the list uh, was uh, Citizen of Earth. It is coming to PS4, PS Vita, Wii U, 3DS, and PC. Um, another game you can get um, for next week will be Resident Evil HD Remastered. It's sort of a spin on the um, GameCube edition, if I heard correctly. So it's going to be up graphics a bit and stuff like that. It's still, it's, it was, it's. I think it's still going to have that sort of tanky control to it. But it's still it's still going to look a lot better than the, the original one. Uh, so the and the next game is uh, Saint Row 4 Reelected, which is basically uh, Saint Row the PS3 Xbox 360 edition of Saint Row 4 with all, all the DLC. And it will be on the 20th. It will be coming out with uh, the DLC Get Out of Hell, which uh, the DLC can be bought with uh, Saint Row 4 Reelected. Uh, if I remember, I think it's for forty dollars. You can buy the game with the with the DLC, or you can buy uh, reelected on itself and get out of hell on itself. I think both are both twenty dollars each. If I remember com- correctly, uh, the next one is a Motorcycle Club. It's a digital cross buy for PS4 and PS3. And the last game for this, uh, for on the list for this week is Splice, which is a di- digital version coming to PS4 and PS3. Uh, I forgot to say that, uh, sorry, Resident Evil HD Remastered is coming to PS3, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. And uh, Saints Row 4 is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. It's, it's the remastered, basically, edition of Saints Row 4. Uh, yeah. So, Alright, so let's get to This Week in News. Alright, so our first article is a big shocker when I read that one when I got up one morning, is uh, GTA 5 for PC gets delayed. So uh, if, you, if you're waiting on it for the, in two weeks, well, you're, you're out of luck because you're going to have to wait uh, till March 24th to get your, uh, your hand on the game. Rockstar announced that the, it was, the game needed just a couple more weeks of testing and polishing before they really were happy for uh, the game to come out. Um, if you go on the article on the website, which will be uh, which the article link will be bedded, embedded in the uh, the article for the, the this podcast, you can find the link to that article, and you can see there's a couple new screenshots with it, which are pretty nice. They're all in 4K. Uh, if ever you want you want to use the uh, the screenshots for something, don't use the ones on the website though, because I I uh, I shrink them down so they I, they use less space. So if you want full res, go go to the Rockstar Newswire Newswire to get the the full articles there. Um, the, the, they also gave out at the same time the minimum specifications for the the PC versions. Oh, and one one thing I forgot to say too is that the, you are going to be able to play uh, 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 the game. The game will be 1080p, 60 frames per second, but you will also be able to get out up to a 4K resolution out of it and play up to three three screens. So I'm not, I'm not a PC guy so I don't really know all the things about all the technical terms about it. I know what three screen means of course, but anyway. So you got the minimum the, they sent out the minimum specifications and the recommended specifications. I won't go all into detail because it's a lot of um, uh, terms most people don't understand, but the the main thing is is you need 65 gigs of memory to install the the game. And uh, what other info? Just browsing through the article just to make sure. I uh, it works with most Windows down to Vista with at least uh, Vista 64-bit Service Pack 2. 
and uh, uh, they were they recommend an eight gig RAM, but you can go down to four gig, which is not what I heard is not too bad of uh, specs for uh, for a big game like GTA V. Um, because it pulled a lot of energy, a lot of power out of the PS3, Xbox 360 edition, so you can just imagine. Um, other in, in that press release that they released uh, that day, they also uh, pre pre gave us a little bit more precision on when the online heists were coming out, and they were they stated that the, it was coming somewhere between now and before the PC version came out. So at least now we got a somewhat of a time frame they were they, it was a bit iffy they were saying they were saying that they're the somewhat in the next couple of weeks but actually not a couple of weeks so i would say somewhat in let, let's say in a month maybe but don't quote me that's not what they actually said so anyway somewhere between uh now and march 24th before the pc version comes out ps3 xbox 360 ps4 xbox one will get the heists and I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna hopefully I'll get a chance to try it out because it seems really interesting the way they set it up, good uh, good variations and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so that's it for um, so that's it for that GTA news, which is a bit disappointed if you wanted to play GTA because a lot of people uh, with all that uh, petition they had last year to get that game on and anyway. Why I I don't see what the big problem is to wait a couple more a, a month or so more, but hey, I'm, I don't have to wait for it. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you won't have to wait that much longer. But when you get it, at least you'll there is a uh, photo editor actually coming out. Uh, sorry, a a video editor coming a Rockstar editor actually they call it. So you'll be able to post uh, videos on Rockstar Newswire, uh, Rockstar Social Club, and YouTube. So that's gonna be fun. At least you get that extra feature up on on the other consoles. The next piece of news is going to be Evolve Goes Gold and um, gets a cinematic trailer. Once again, you can find uh, the trailer on our website. Uh, so, Evolve is coming out on February 10th, if you didn't know, uh, and the game has gone gold, meaning the game is, they they're, they have their final version, and now they're starting to print the CDs and uh, prepping it to go out on, uh, on digital releases. Uh, the game is coming out for PS4, Xbox One, PC. Uh, yeah, so you'll be able to get that if you, this week if you're lucky enough to have an Xbox One. Uh, well, there is a beta evol evolve until the 19th. Um, you get the, you pre pretty much just get the core mode f at the beginning. Well, right now it's uh, it's uh, when I'm recording this. It's, it's Wednesday, so I think they were adding more stuff at, closer to the end of the week, unlocking a bit more modes, but. Um, uh, yeah, so you'll get to the 19th. I'll try to get on it on the Xbox, so I can, uh, m might be my, uh, the ping in the week for next week, I might talk about Evolve, so, uh, how I liked it and all that stuff. Uh, is there anything else on Evolve, looking through the article? Uh, no, okay, that seems about it. Next little piece of news is, uh, it's a game I fell in love with, actually, it, the, 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 it, uh, Life is Strange gets they get they released uh, dev diaries they're gonna they released the first one out of three called a new beginning so if you haven't heard this little game i actually saw it a couple months back about a month ago sorry um from it's from uh, don't not entertainment which is uh it's published by square enix uh, they released uh, they they had a lot of demands to get um, an inside look at what what goes on in the studio and how the game is made and stuff like that so they released a first first video of three f three that they said they will release about how they go do things in the studio and so I, I, it's about it's about a 10 minute yeah 10 minute video and you can go watch that uh, it's it's an interesting video i watched it and it's uh, it, it gives you a lot of feel that they they, they put heart and soul into the game uh, yeah, so IGN was able to get actually their hands on a bit, on a slice on a vertical slice of the game, and they're saying like the game is a lot of it's it's not like Telltale games where you have to um, you know have to make rapid rapid decisions and stuff like that. It allows you to take your time when you make your decisions, stuff like that. It's, it's, sorry, forgot to say that if if you're not sure what life Life is Strange is, is a, fi a five part episode. Uh, five part five-part episode game, like, sort of like if you played the Telltale games, like The Walking Dead, it's going to be in that fashion, and, um, unlike Telltale games, you'll be able to, uh, 
uh, take more of your time to make decisions because uh, the decisions you make do have consequences in the long term or closer to the end of the game and stuff like that. So the, it's going to be a little bit more fun that way. We'll have to see. The game come, the first episode comes out on uh, January 30th. So uh, it's going to let you play the first episode on that day. Uh, the game is coming out on PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. And uh, also, if you guys ha are on PC, you can get... Uh, if you pre-order the game before January 29th, you will be able to get a 10% discount on the Season Pass. So, instead of buying one game at a time, you can buy the whole the whole five-episode pack. And at least you're going to get... Uh, going to get at least 10% off of that game. So the next little piece of news, uh, this one's a little bit weird, uh, well not weird, uh, came out of nowhere, Friday the 13th, the video game was announced uh, this week. This game is announced to be coming out later in 2015, it's gonna actually going to be, odd enough, it's going to, the way they explained it, it's going to be a um, asymmetrical, cooperative, competitive multiplayer, that's going to basically... If you if you looked at Evolve, it's gonna be in the same line where you have one person playing as Jason, the well Jason Voorhees, the Friday the Thirteenth uh, antagonist, and uh, uh, a group of um, and the other side you can other players will be able to play the the campers or f uh, the, sorry the uh, uh, this uh, small little group of um, Camp goers from uh, Crystal Lake. Uh, they're going to be able to, so you're going to be able to try to f fight off Jason or Jason try to kill the campers or whatever side you play on. Um, this is the first official licensed game from uh, Friday the Thirteenth since the any the NES version from 1989. The only real information about the release is it's they they're they're trying to hit October 2015 for the game. So hopefully we'll we'll get a Hopefully we'll get a good, decent game. Hopefully it's not a rushed game because they are they're they're trying to make the game uh, because there's an up and coming there's a there's a they're trying to they're making a series of Friday the Thirteenth soon. I'm not sure when it's coming out. I think it was 2015, 2016 launch or something like that. But they're trying to make the game look more like the older versions, not like the uh, Jason X or stuff like that. They're trying to stay to the original uh, line line of story which is great because the later the later ones weren't as great as the original ones I watched them all and it's it's some of my favorite movies and I really like and I really enjoy the, the the first ones better so that's ho hopefully hopefully we'll get a good game because usually when we get licensed game are usually iffy when they when you get a licensed game on movies or anything else so hopefully we'll get some uh, interesting uh, stuff out of that Next little piece of news that we got was uh, for the Microsoft at um, sorry, we, uh, Forza Motorsport Motor 6 was announced for 2016. Uh, it's going to be by Turn Turn 10 Studios. It was announced uh, during the North American <coughs> International Auto Show. Sorry, I think I think that was held in this in Detroit earlier this week. Uh, they announced the game while they were. Uh, they were introducing the new 2017 Ford GT, which will be featured on the box art of the video game when it's released. Uh, if you're not sure, there's also a trailer that you can go uh, check out on the on the on the on the article on the article posted on our website. Uh, coming out at the same, uh, also announced that there will be a Shelby GT350 Mustang and a F150 Raptor, also included in the game at the same time. Um, there will be some gameplay footage shown at E3 in June, so you guys can can look for that when that comes when that comes around uh, in June. Other little piece of news that we got was um, they 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 released a um, the guys at Sledgehammer Studios, uh, Studios released a preview for uh, the next DLC, well the first DLC for Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare named Havoc. So. I don't, I don't, I don't have Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare, but this, this first DLC really is pulling my attention towards it because you, um, you actually get four new uh, maps uh, by the name they um, 
called the Urban Core Drift and Sideshow. So you you gotta if you look at the article you get a bit of description from all of them, but they seem to be very fluent maps. Um, uh, what I think what pulled me more my my int attention to this to this uh, DLC was the Exo Zombie mode. Uh, this is the first of its kind they introduced. Well, they had zombie modes a couple uh, a couple years back in uh, the first Ghost. No, sorry, not Ghost. Uh, in one of the older games, I, I don't play Call of Duty anymore as much. Um, but this time they have exosuit and they can do boost jumps, and so I get so it's going to be a lot more fast-paced game, uh, and it's going to create a lot more challenge in those horde modes. Uh, the game also includes a new weapon, the AE-4 Widowmaker, which is a direct energy laser rifle. Uh, it, it increased the, m the mobility, but the only thing that they were announcing, they were saying in the video that the, the gun might overheat while you're using it, so that's one thing to check out. So that's that's it for the pack, so if you have the season pass, show, well, you already got it. I think it's going to be uh, 20 bucks when it released 15 or 20 they didn't announce it but i'm assuming it's going to be like battlefield and all those other guys um the dlc is coming to xbox three uh, xbox uh, one on january 27 uh yeah january 27 on xbox one they haven't announced any other other uh, dates for the any of the other um console yet but i guess you can it's going to be in the couple months or anything like that uh, other little pieces of news, I don't have any articles on the website because I didn't have time to write articles for those, but uh, then, uh, yes, uh, Wednesday there was a Nintendo Direct and they announced a Majora's Mask 3DS X, X, Majora's Mask 3DS XL for 199 coming out, uh, I think, later this year. At the same time, they also announced a couple um, a couple new games coming out. Uh, this year with a couple and uh, some new amiibos coming in 2015 so that's something if you guys are into Nintendo and those uh, little collectible figurines something to look for uh, public uh, so our next our next little piece of news that we got um, PSN is, is gonna have a maintenance on January 15th so today if I release it on on Thursday on January 15th uh, it's going to be from noon till 4, so you guys at least got a heads up, so don't go freaking out and uh, filling up the PS, uh, the um, PlayStation blog with your uh, hate speech and stuff like that about uh, why is this thing never working. At least you got a heads up a couple days ago. Well, I released a podcast the same day, so it's not that big of a heads up. At least if you were on the internet, you saw it. It was going to happen anyway. Uh, the last, the last, our last piece of news is uh, Resident Evil Revelation is delayed one week so if you're on if you're not if unfortunately if you were waiting for that game it's gonna be delayed a week uh, instead of being f on February 17th it's gonna be on the 24th on the 25th and all the other the other three episodes after that are, are gonna be on the March 4th March March 11th and March 18th, and you're going to be able to buy the retail version of all of uh, all the games f on the 20th of March in all one pack. All right, so that's it for the news this week. All right, so let's talk about what I played this week. Well, I didn't I didn't get a chance to play a lot of games because I was trying to get all the uh, podcast stuff up and running. Uh, to get so you can got you guys can get the podcast as almost a, ev everywhere that it's available. Um, I actually played start to finish. I played the Swapper. I will try to get a review out there for you guys, uh, for you guys to read. I know the game's been out for a while, but since it's a January uh, PS Plus release, I thought, hey, if you guys got it in your queue and you're not sure if it's a good game or not, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to write a review. Try to get by the end of the weekend. But I have a couple minutes there to try to write up a quick review for you guys. Uh, what else did I play? I did I, um, there when I talked about Evolve. There was a uh, on Saturday. There was a uh, a uh, close um, uh, close uh, beta for uh, for Evolve on PS4 uh, for a stress test. Um, I won't talk about the game on that point because there was a. Uh, non-disclosure agreement on that one, so I won't I won't get into it. But I will when I play the Xbox One version uh, later this week. I will um, 
uh, I will release an article probably, like I said, it's probably will be my ping of the week for next week. I think that's pretty much what all I played, so didn't play that much this week, I was pretty busy doing uh, site stuff. So yeah, alright, so let's get to our ping of the week. Alright, so my subject for the ping of the week, uh, before I start that, uh, sorry, every week I try to pick a subject and I give my opinion on it as best as I can. Um, of course, I do implore you guys if you feel, if you, if you want to leave your, your comments on this, please do either on the article for the ping of the week or on the, the, the sorry, the article for the podcast or the, I do release um, a written version of the, of the ping of the week. A little bit more clean than when I talk, <laughs> so at least you guys can do that. You can leave a comment there. Um, please always, I try. Please, when when you do submit your comments, do try to stay uh, intelligent in your comments. Don't say uh, stupid stuff, please, as much as least as less as you can. So yeah, all right. So the subject for this week will I decided to talk about broken games. So, uh, 2014 was a weird year when it comes to video games. Uh, we had some awesome games like Shadow Mortar, Shadow, uh, Shadow Mortar, which was my game of the year last year, and Far Cry, which was my s uh, number two for game of the year last year. But I also had games that just felt clearly short of the mark, like Drive Club and Master Chief Collection, which uh, was kind of a bit disappointing for people really waiting for Master Chief Collection. The people were just talking about that game all year long until it came out and it was just like a big flop because the main part the multiplayer didn't work anyway so yeah when especially talking about drive club 2 because drive club they wanted there was supposed to be a ps plus edition and they actually just completely did not release that because the game just wasn't working and they didn't want to overload the storm the server more with a, a game that didn't work so what what really caused all these events to happen uh, that angered a lot of uh, a lot of gamers was it negligence or just having trouble with the system or not knowing what to do about it. Um, let's get one thing straight. There, this is no way, shape, or form acceptable because people pay big, big money for these games when they come out. At a price of seventy dollars a pop, you don't want to wait for a patch to come out in two weeks. I don't mind the day one patch because it probably fixes bugs that they found between going gold and launch day. Because if you think about it, they can't call back the retail versions to fix this stuff. To fix this stuff. This is where I think the new era of gaming helped a bit, a bit. Not like the older, like the old days when the the NES were, when the when you got a NES version of the game, that's all. That's the game you were stuck with. There was no revision change or nothing like that. There wasn't any patches or stuff like that. Uh, where the problem lies is when you get a broken game, when it a broken game that ships to you and it's still broken after two months, and then people just feel cheated. This is where we get into problems like when Shuhei Yoshida has to apologize for Drive Club. No owner of a big business, especially a president, shouldn't have to apologize for something that went wrong. Which, like when they have big QA meetings and stuff like that. Like the the worst part is Drive Club is not is not a bad game at its core. It's just the online the online was completely broken right off the bat. Even today, they're still they're still doing update to get the game to to be an optimal game. Um, because of the launch problem, while well, the PS Plus edition for Drive Club has been, is, was put on hold until further notice, which angered a lot of people. Um, if we look at the Master Chief Collection, well, I'm hearing that generally the matchmaking is getting better, but it's still somewhat touchy. Now, who can we point the finger at? Well, there is, a, there can be multiple culprits here. It can be shareholders weighing in more than they should. Because they want revenue, they don't really care about. They don't really care about the gamer. In consequence, this leads to extremely tight deadlines, and a hard push to reach the goal. Then, what might happen is publishers know that the game has issues, but decides to release the game anyway and patch it later, which seems to be a big trend in 2014. Uh, another avenue we can take is the the new hardware. Are game developers overwhelmed by the new system and their infrastructures? Maybe. What seems to be the biggest problem last year was the multi multiplayer side of thing. Going back to our usual suspect drive club, we can see that this might not be an issue during development, but when you have thousands of people logging in at the same time, it might create an overload of demand that the coding might not have compensated for, or especially if you only tested on a couple hundred people. 
to wrap this up, I just hope the developers and publishers will take the time and create pristine games. If you have delayed the game, do it if it helps if it helps out a bunch. Um, there was a couple there's a couple of games that in 2014 they actually delayed to 2015 like Battlefield Hardline. That's the weird thing like when I was younger, I I hated when games got pushed because you know when you when you're waiting for a game so long and you're just like you want to play it now and when it gets delayed like especially GTA was bad for that when you when back when Vice City and San Andreas were coming out like they were pushed sometimes a month further you're like oh god you have to wait that much more but now I'm I'm at a point where I understand where if if it needs if if it benefits the gamer to wait a bit longer well to get a working game well why not because at the end of the day we just really we just really we're gamers and we just want to play games. All right, so that's it for the ping of the week, and that I guess this concludes the everything I have to say for this week on the podcast for gaming wise. Um, you, did you like what you hear? Well, there's a couple ways you can help us out with that. You can um, you can check out our affiliates. You can go to Amazon. You can click on our uh, Amazon affiliate link. If you go to our website, it's usually on the, it's on the sidebar when you. Uh, when you go on the sidebar, you go down, you go down a bit, and you can f- see the support us uh, little image of Amazon. Click on there, then just we like I said last week, you, we have uh, so far Amazon for the states and Amazon for Canada. You click on one of the links, you make your purchase that you usually you just do your normal purchases like you, like you would, and it helps the site out. It gives us a percentage of your um, of your purchase, yeah, a percentage of your per- purchase. And um, it just helps me make the site better. Make so yeah. Another way you can help us out, you can if you're looking for uh, inexpensive uh, uh, Steam games or um, Origin games or stuff like that, uh, you can go to www.g2a.com. That is also on the sidebar. I have it right on the top there. You click on it. It use it. Um, uh, you go directly to uh, the website. You just make your normal pur- purchase, and like like Amazon, it gives it a little slice of the pie. You even have uh, uh, PS Plus subscription cards and Xbox Live cards and stuff like that. Uh, most codes are global codes, so you, there's no region locks or anything like that. Uh, I'd like to say thanks also to our. Uh, our, for for the music on the show that we have, uh, we have uh, techno acts royalty free music that is that is the intro and outro of the podcast. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, this week in news intro is by Man- Mansardian from uh, at uh, freesound.org. Uh, the ping of the week intro is Unfa at freesound.org. And of course, if you want to reach us, uh, comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, or even submit a topic of the, a topic of the week, or even if you want to uh, you want to comment on the topic of the week, just fire off uh, a comment at podcast at metimegamer dot com. Uh, and also, like I'll add this is if if you would like to put an ad on uh, on my podcast on the podcast of metimegamer dot com. Um, Go for it. Just send me a uh, just send us an email at contact at metimegamer dot com. It'd be a pleasure to uh, to help you out with that. Um, you can for me time gamer. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook dot com forward slash me time gamer all one word. Uh, on Twitter at me time gamer all one word. You can also go on YouTube and find us there. I'll try. I usually try to post uh, the video format of this podcast. Last week I was about a day and a half late, so I apologize for that. But I will try to get it out at the same time as the auto podcast this week. You can also read my articles at uh, gambitcon.com. Uh, this our website. That website is about movies, TV, video games, anims, and uh, a couple more stuff. Um, yeah, so you, usually all my articles on here, you can see them over there, and, uh, yeah. You can also hear my show on Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher is a radio on demand. You can download the free app anytime you want. You can listen anywhere, anytime. Uh, Stitcher is an award-winning free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows, plus discover from 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. Cre- you can create custom playlists, over 20,000 shows to discover. You can rate and re- review my show on Stitcher, which will help. You can you're, you're going to be uh, uh, right now. I'm having a 
an issue where you can't really find my show because it's brand new, right? And there's a, a thousand shows be, uh, bigger than mine that are on top of the list. But if the more you review and rate my show, uh, the um, right now, uh, just if you want to find my show on Stitcher, you can actually um, uh, click. Uh, uh, on the article of the episode two or one or whatever, even on the on the sidebar of the website, you can find a link. Click on the link. Uh, you can click on listen later. It's gonna pop up uh, on your account on your uh, app on your phone. So that's something if you want to bring in with you and listen to on, on the drive or anything like that. Uh, Stitcher is all is available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. Uh, it's on demand. It's on the go. There's no downloading, no no downloading, no syncing, and no waste of memory. Stream your favorite podcasts. Uh, yeah, that's it for Stitcher. So that's it for this week. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. Uh, as as we will progress, I will get less and less stress doing this. <laughs> so I don't record a lot in my voice. So thank you for sticking around so yeah thank you for listening to the podcast and uh, yeah that's it see you next week guys thank you very much